Hello, I'm JW, and it's this uh, old fuse box again. Uh, in this video, we'll just have a look inside and see uh, how these things were actually made. Uh, despite being quite old, they are actually a decent design. Although, as in a uh, previous video, uh, it's not really the sort of thing you want to have in your house these days, as uh, most of the modern SATA features that consumer units have, uh, these don't, of course, simply because they were designed uh, 50 years ago. Now, these Wilex uh, fuse boxes were uh, designed uh, many decades ago and they've actually been fitted uh, in literally millions of properties both in the UK and in other countries. And whilst they're not the sort of thing you want these days, they're actually quite a decent design. Uh, the fuses themselves are these uh, just plug-in modules here with the brass uh, prongs there. The fuse that wire goes through the centre of that ceramic piece. And there's uh, generally four values of fuse wire that these would have. So it just wraps around the end terminal there, through the centre, and then around the terminal on the other end. This is a 15 amp one, which is blue. The red ones are 30 amps. And we compare the two, you see the wire is quite a bit thicker in the 30 amp one on the top there. There's another 30, and uh, this is the 5, which is most typically used for lighting. This doesn't actually have any wire in it because uh, it's obviously blown at some point and uh, didn't get replaced for some reason. The uh, plastic shields uh, have the uh, slots in, and yes, they're all different uh, spacings and sizes. This is to make sure you can't put the wrong fuse in here. So if you want to put your 30 amp fuse in there, well, it doesn't going to fit, and it doesn't fit in there either. So obviously someone put a bit of thought into it. These particular ones are all uh, solid plastic in one colour. Uh, some of the older ones had uh, just a black piece and the edge was painted in the appropriate colour, but uh, they're fairly unusual and uh, given they don't make even these ones anymore, it's uh, not likely you'll be finding any of those. There is a fourth value of fuse uh, which is a 20 amp and that had yellow dots. Again, that was seldom used, so it's extremely unlikely that you'll actually find one of those. Now all of these uh, plastic arrows are just fixed in with a single fixing screw and any one of these can be fitted in any of the positions. I say they're all actually identical inside. It's simply the shape of the uh, plastic piece which uh, determines uh, which size fuse you can actually insert in there. Of course the householder would not normally be taking these out, it's just simply the fact of unplugging the fuse part and replacing the wire if necessary. So there's the insides. As you can see, all the uh, ways are exactly the same. Just single fixing screws uh, for the uh, fuse holders. Uh, two uh, screws at the top here, that's where the wiring would go in for each of the circuits. And again, a decent design, it's got two uh, screws uh, clamping onto the wire rather than just a single one. The bottom ones here have uh, threaded holes in, but in this particular box they're not used. Uh, they do have uh, applications in uh, some of the others. But uh, I'll tell you, this one they're not actually used, it's uh, purely the fact it's the same moulding as the uh, top one and they haven't drilled out the side of it to put the wire in. Cover this is just held on with these uh, screws here. This did obviously have four originally, although two of them are missing. So this came out of a house up the road actually. So. It uh, was replaced with a nice new consumer unit. So there's the cover, just a single moulded piece of plastic, and unlike modern consumer units, uh, see how thick the uh, actual edge of that is. It's uh, several millimetres thick. Modern consumer units, of course, are made out of thin uh, bendy plastic in most cases. You see there it's uh, about four millimetres or so in thickness there. When you put these, of course, if you drop them on the floor, they tend to break and shatter into thousands of pieces. But then again, you just have to be a bit careful with those. The cover for the fuses is made out of the same very thick plastic. And again, if you drop this on the floor, they break. It's quite common to find these actually missing. A single screw at the top there to fix it in. And the inside has the uh, fuse numbers one, two, three, and four. And then this sort of textured area, you can write in what the circuits actually are. This astoundingly does actually have them written in. I'd suggest that 99% of these are just totally blank. Or if they are filled in, they're wrong because someone's altered it at a later date. Now the actual box itself is made of wood. And uh, fairly well constructed there with the uh, joints on the corner. 
The later ones were plastic and had a wholly uh, moulded in piece and these won't actually be permitted from next year as the uh, change uh, comes in where the uh, any electrical enclosure has to be made of a non-combustible material. Of course timber is fairly combustible although it's not actually that likely that it's going to set on fire but obviously it's a possible risk so that change is uh, coming in from next year which is uh, 2015. So if you're watching it then uh, that's probably already in and uh, in operation. Uh, inside we've got the two terminals uh, here for the incoming supply. I've uh, got the uh, line on this side and neutral there. There's usually some plastic covers which fit over here because uh, of course these are going to be live regardless of the position of the switch. They're missing from here and they are in a fair number of these devices. A double pulse switch so it's off in the up position on in the down position. Uh, the neutral goes straight through to this bar here and just comes up to the neutral block. Again four blocks or four terminal holes corresponding with the four holes, one for each circuit. A uh, line goes through to the bottom, a copper strap there to those four pieces along the bottom. And it's worth remembering that uh, if you have taken out the uh, fuse carriers that uh, with the switch on all of that is going to be live, hence why you don't want to be taking these out without uh, turning the switch off first. And then the top ones here are simply uh, individually isolated connection between the two of course made with the fuse so when that plugs in there via the fuse wire and then your outgoing circuits connect in the uh, top there. This strip here is for the earth uh, connection. Again we've got four there and another two at the top which would either be the incoming earth or a uh, bonding to uh, gas or water. Two big holes there which would secure this thing to the wall. Uh, the back is totally open. Now these did come with a uh, Paxilin or some other material back plate which was an optional extra frequently not fitted because of the fact it was optional and therefore had to buy it separately and it cost a few pennies extra. Plastic ones uh, say did have a hole uh, enclosed back and you had to sort of hack a big hole in to fit the wires in. These were typically just screwed onto a board or some other material at the back which sort of increases the uh, flammable enclosure problem. And uh, as you can see this one has the usual white emulsion paint uh, slapped up the side and on the bottom there, on the top and all over the place and uh, even the box here, yes, those white specks are the usual emulsion paint which these things seem to be uh, attracting. And these can actually be dismantled quite easily. The frame uh, in the middle there is a separately made piece so just removing these two screws here and over here. Again, these are just normal uh, black uh, wood screws that uh, I could have bought in any hardware shop at the time. And then that piece simply just lifts off. And that's just a uh, wooden frame. The uh, earth terminals there simply bolted through from the side there. And I say these are actually quite well made. They've got uh, at least uh, probably the corners there. Again, the timber's quite substantial. So at the time, this was a reasonable quality item. Now that's the inner frame, it's a moulded piece of uh, plastic. Main switch on this only rated to 60 amps and these particular ones uh, you can only put up to uh, 30 amps in each way. You can get uh, certainly these little circuit breakers and the uh, natural cartridge fuses which should go above 30 amps but uh, they're not suitable for fitting into this particular model mainly because of the rating of the main switch and also this uh, assembly on the bottom obviously is only rated to a uh, certain level. Generally speaking, these contacts are what normally fails. Someone puts like a 45 amp or something in there. These tend to overheat, go black, and uh, the result is that they, either the uh, carrier welds itself into there, which means then you can't get it out and you try and pull it out and it breaks, or uh, it goes uh, the other way and it sort of goes loose, which because then causes it to overheat even more, which makes it even more loose, and eventually things just stop working, or, and then you eventually find that this is completely overheated and melted and the actual carrier or the little circuit breaker such as one of those has sort of uh, gone all blackened and uh, horrible on the back. There were some of these made which had uh, a different set of terminals here which you could put the higher rated devices in and there was usually a notch cut out of there which fitted with the corresponding notch on the back of the uh, appropriate uh, holder. That's not the appropriate holder but they had an extra tab which stuck out. They were usually orange or green. 
but uh, that didn't stop people just sort of filing it off and then trying to ram it in there and then shoehorn in the relevant uh, high rated piece. Here's another one. This is a uh, slightly different model in that it has the uh, plastic back on it there, so it is fully enclosed, or at least it was until some buffoon uh, hacked out this gigantic hole to put the cabling in. That's really a poor job, isn't it? Uh, and notice the plastic's actually a bit thinner than on the other model, so uh, economies were already coming in there. Fuses are exactly the same, and uh, holders, these are actually those ones with the uh, painted edge rather than the uh, whole thing being out of one piece of plastic. This obviously has only three fuses inside. You could get these anything from one up to uh, either six in a single block, and there were bigger ones, I think, which went up to eight. And there were some other ones which had sort of two sets of six on either side, so you ended up with 12 and the switch was in the middle, and all kinds of other combinations, and there were sort of weird units made for uh, split uh, supplies where you had sort of night heating and uh, storage heaters and all kinds of other things put in there at the same time. I don't have any of those here, but I uh, do have some pictures on the website of all that stuff. Now this particular one has uh, another slightly unusual feature which you don't see very often, and it's this one at the bottom here. This is where the circuit wiring goes in at the top here, the same as the other one, the neutrals in the uh, block uh, just at the top here, out of frame there. This has uh, a threaded block here which actually has screws in it. And the reason for this is you can actually attach a wire here, which then come out and go to another of the fuse boxes next to it, so you could extend this and add extra circuits without having to replace the entire thing. And it does actually have the label in it for that, which again is fairly unusual. Let's see at the top there, Wirex Extenso. And it just shows you how you can uh, extend the wiring out. So from that uh, bottom terminal there, it just goes straight across into the extension unit. And of course the neutral comes up from the neutral block there in the same way. And notice on this one the neutral block has four holes. Whereas, of course, there's only three circuits, and the fourth hole is specifically designed for this uh, extension unit. I don't have an extension unit, unfortunately, but uh, it's going to be pretty much the same as this, just without a switch inside. You would, of course, uh, extend the earth cross as well, although it's not actually shown on the diagram, but uh, then these diagrams for people who knew what they were doing, not uh, DIY bodgers. So there's that one set, it's fairly uh, similar in construction, the uh, central piece is essentially identical, and the switch and the main bar and everything else is again pretty much just the same. Now back on the other one here, and it's got these threaded holes in the bottom contacts, but of course you don't attach wiring there, and you can't anyway because there's uh, no holes to do it anyway. However, the holes there with the threads do have a purpose, and if you look carefully in the bottom, you can see in the bottom there, there's uh, the end of a brass screw in both of those holes, and of course the others as well. And the reason that's there is simply to secure that brass block in position. If you look at the side view there, you've got the brass uh, bus bar along the bottom there, which is just one piece of copper. The uh, curved contact piece here is another piece, and then the brass block in the center, and the thing that holds it all together is there's two screws one at the front there, one behind, which can't see, which screw into the bottom of the block to hold it in position. And the actual bus bar itself is screwed onto the background with the uh, screws here and over here. The top one's fixed in a similar way, although obviously you can't see the uh, fixing screw on this side because the terminal's blocked, but if you look on the back, yep, there they are, it's going through to the back, and these have just got a single screw in this case. Just take one of those out. We can see uh, there it is. So a screw there into that hole, and then the other hole is what holds the uh, brass block onto the uh, copper terminal piece there, and it's a little recess where that screw head fits, and then the other one just fits in like that. The main switch on these are all very similar. They only have two screws, even though there are other holes there, those are not actually used. I've only ever seen them with the two screws in there, so this doesn't actually have any missing screws. 
And these switches are incredibly simple inside. And when you consider this is the 60 amp uh, switch, or in some cases 100, which would do the entire house. It's really surprising to see how little are in there. Those two brass uh, screws just come out there. Notice it is actually marked with the uh, N and uh, L symbols for line and neutral there. So when we take the top off, all we've got is a plastic moulded piece, which is what presses or doesn't press the copper pieces behind. That's just the two assemblies. There's the uh, first piece and then that's just the lever. In terms of the top, copper piece there, copper pieces there, and all that happens is that the uh, two prongs there just press against the uh, copper bits there, and the switching part is actually here. Don't to see there, but uh, that's in the on position. When the switch is off, it just presses that down to open up the gap. And therefore, disconnect or connect. So interestingly, if the switch breaks or this fails or the front flies off because someone's unscrewed it, then it actually results in the switch being permanently on. That bus bar, of course, goes in there like that. And again, it's the same arrangement. Obviously, this will be clamped in with the uh, screws normally. And then that lower piece there is on a spring. So it just presses up against the uh, bottom piece or not, depending on whether the uh, switch is being pressed down or it's being released. These terminals just come out loose. The single screw holds that piece in. As you can see, it's just a uh, brass machine piece with a uh, copper strip on the back. One end forms a contact. There's the sort of switch uh, contact itself. And underneath, of course, just got the uh, springs there, which uh, press it forward onto the other uh, contacts. This side be uh, exactly the same. So let's look at the old uh, Wilex uh, fuse boxes. If you've watched the whole video to this point, you may be liking to know that there's a load more pictures and things of that on my website. Uh, link will be in the description section below. But in any case, thanks for watching.